Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with some post-fight comments on Sergio Thompson's stunning second-round knockout of Jorge Linares. But before I go further, just remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say my own belief in boxing, my bias, is that talent matters, right? And that talented fighters will sometimes go through unbelievably unfortunate stretches in their career where they lose sometimes one, sometimes two, in Carlos Molina's case, sometimes three in a row. But those losses don't decrease the fighter's hand speed, the fighter's foot speed, the fighter's accuracy, the fighter's overall talent, right? I believe talent really does decide most of the things that happen in boxing. Now here, Jorge Linares got stopped in two by a very heavy-handed Sergio Thompson, right? Thompson did land some right hands. Linares did get rocked in both the first round and the second round, right? But even with this loss, and even with the loss before this one to Tony DeMarco, Linares remains someone you need to look at because very few in boxing can match his hand speed. Very few in boxing have his talent, right? The big concern here, in my opinion, isn't that Linares, who now has three losses, he actually got stopped in the first round many years ago. The big concern here isn't that Linares fought the wrong fight. And for some reason, Linares didn't use his jab. I'm sure when he looks at the film of this fight, he's going to ask himself why he didn't do more to maintain distance between the two fighters. But the big story here isn't that Linares fought the wrong fight and got legitimately dropped and stopped, right? I don't believe that's the story. And um, what Linares did, he kept his hands low. He relies on head movement to avoid punches. I thought he got too full of himself. It happens. Fighters have egos. And here he was against a guy with something like an 80% knockout ratio. And he let the guy get up close on him. Sergio Thompson is hyper aggressive, right? He literally just came in on Linares, right? Linares, for some odd reason, decided to try to slug with him a bit, which was unfortunate. And Thompson was able to lower the boom with the right hand. But I believe the real story here is actually the scar tissue around Linares' eyes. You can prepare for a lot of things in boxing. Linares can look at the film of this and say, gee, what was I doing? I should have stayed in the middle of the ring. I should have had my left hand up to block his right hand. In fact, since he was fighting a guy who's a slugger, not a boxer, he should have had his hands up the whole time, right? You know, have as much defense as possible. Thompson can't match Linares' hand speed or movement on his best day. So Linares should have been more conservative. Now, he can address that. But what he really can't address is the scar tissue around his eyes that, quite frankly, has led to bleeding in fights. And that really is the reason why this fight was stopped. You know, Linares gets hit and he gets dropped in the second round. But he actually gets off the canvas. And he looks lucid enough. In fact, as the referee is counting, and I have the fight on my YouTube channel page. As the referee is counting, Linares has the presence of mind to stay down for eight. 
Then he gets up, right? He's not staggering around the ring. This isn't a situation where he's up, but he's not really up. This isn't Thomas Hearns getting up against Marvin Hagler. And you look at Hearns and you realize this guy can take another punch. No, this was a lucid. Jorge Linares fighting a bit recklessly. He gets drops. He gets back up. He was able to clear his head. What he wasn't able to do, though, was to heal the cut above his eye. And this really is the second straight fight. The second fight in a row. Where Linares, in my opinion, has been stopped on cuts more than anything else. I thought he beat Tony DeMarco. I'll be blunt. I thought he was winning that fight. DeMarco had his moments, but I thought Linares clearly could have made it to the distance. I'm not here to say that Linares wasn't a bloody mess, but he had been a bloody mess for several rounds. I didn't think there was a reason why the referee should have stopped that fight when the ref did. And apparently I wasn't alone because Tony DeMarco agreed to give Linares a rematch if Linares got by this fight. And I believe what happened in this fight was Linares decided he wanted to put on a show. He could have fought the fight on his back foot. He chose not to. These are the moments in a fighter's career like Ray Leonard against Duran, the first fight. These are the moments where you have to wonder, what's the guy thinking? Why would Linares give up his comparative advantage? But that's what he did. He got hit. He got dropped. When he got back up, he was bleeding. The referee takes him over to the side of the ring, and the doctor stops the fight. Right? If you're a gambler, what this means is that Jorge Linares against really anyone, anyone in his weight class is a serious contender, right? I believe this is one of those fighters who is better than advertised. Much of the world is going to look at his record. They're going to see back-to-back -back KO losses. They're going to see an earlier KO loss, and they're going to write him off, right? Don't make that mistake. This guy is still immensely talented, right? If he decides to keep his hands up and just shoot a jab more, he's going to be close to unbeatable. He is world class. What I hope he does is, you know, go to a doctor and see what can be done about his Vito Altafermo type eyes, right? Because at this point, it looks like even punches that aren't that hard seem to open up cuts on him. What he's going to have to do, too, is he's going to have to make sure that he has an excellent cut man in his corner. You'd be surprised what a good cut man can do. If Linares can just avoid being cut in a fight or bleeding in a fight, I am much more bullish on him than I am, let's say, a fighter like an Arthur Abraham, who I don't think is able to correct his shortcomings, right? And so um, I, you know, I'm very bullish on Jorge Linares. I concede that he lost this fight. I chalk this fight up to poor strategy and unfortunately thin skin, right? Linares remains a major player. Sometimes the best gambling values that you can possibly get come when you take a quality fighter after he's had a rough patch in his career. I hope Linares stays with it. Very few, very few can match his speed in the ring. And Linares is a superior talent. Right now, let's talk about uh, Sergio Thompson. You know, I wasn't as impressed with Thompson as I am Linares. Thompson won the fight. He won the fight. But he seems to me to be a free-swinging slugger who just comes in on a straight line. 
I didn't think his defense was that good. I thought he was all or nothing. He's there to either take you out or he's going to lose a decision, right? He strikes me like Sean Cox. Dennis Lebedev's next opponent strikes me, right? When he's out there getting knockouts and certainly he has a huge right hand, no question about it. When he's out there getting knockouts, he looks dominant. It's just a shame that Mar or that Linares's skin broke because it would have been interesting to see if Thompson could have stopped Linares. I think that's an open question, right? And Thompson, let's just say he's going to run into someone who's going to be able to roll away from that right hand, is going to be able to circle him, and is going to make him pay for coming in on straight lines. Obviously, that's what Linares thought he could do. He failed. Um, I don't think Thompson beats Tony DeMarco, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I was less impressed with Thompson than I was Jorge Linares. And uh, I think Linares remains a player. He set his career back because this was a title eliminator, so he would have had a title shot in his next fight. But this is boxing, and some champ somewhere is going to make the mistake of looking at Linares' record instead of his talent. And if Linares gets a shot at a title, I think he's going to be a very live underdog, regardless of who he fights at 140 pounds. Let me point out, too, that I would take Linares, and I know this is controversial, but I would take Linares over Brandon Rios. Right, I think Lenoris is a higher talent level than Brandon Rios. I think that would be an interesting fight. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.